how do you invest in cannabis stocks? I started buying cannabis stocks back in 2018 and actually contributing to Seeking Alpha on those stocks along the way. And for the past four years now, I've learned quite a lot about how to invest in cannabis stocks. Maybe you're in cannabis stocks now, maybe you're thinking about it. Maybe if you're catching this video at some point, there's been a news release that's bringing you into wanting to know more about cannabis stocks. Not as easy as you would think. It's not straightforward. One of the reasons why is cannabis stocks are OTC. Being on the OTC exchange means that cannabis stocks don't have the ability to really draw in all the investors they possibly could. So the fundamental analysis that you're doing on a, in any particular stock really don't count because what happens is the bigger players can't come in to support and buy these stocks. They're simply precluded. Number one, maybe it's because they're on the OTC. Number two, because federal legalization isn't there yet. This is going to hamper the capabilities of investors getting into these stocks and these stocks being supported appropriately like the rest of the market on the one hand. On the other hand, that could represent an excellent opportunity to get involved in a stock. And that's what I've been noticing about these stocks. And this is what I really wanted to put the message out there. This isn't an opportunity for you to buy, then all of a sudden these stocks just go up. They won't. There may be a catalyst, some news event that drives these stocks higher. Inevitably, they all go back down. And the real reason for that is simply they're OTC. And in the United States, they're federally illegal which means they cannot be traded or uplisted to NASDAQ. But even then, even if the federal government were to legalize cannabis and these stocks uplisted to NASDAQ, that doesn't necessarily mean that these stocks will go up. The reason is simple. Investing is a popularity game. If you went to, when I first started putting all these stocks together, this listing of stocks, I went through, I was contributing to Seeking Alpha, and I went through and I found some three or four hundred different stocks that were associated with cannabis. And I also looked at how many people were following these stocks. Some of these followers on these companies was less than a hundred, double digits. If investing is a popularity game and there's less than 100 individuals who are following a stock on a major website that's all about following stocks, there isn't ever going to be enough support to lift these stocks upward. So despite the fact that there may be some news catalyst that does move cannabis stocks whenever that may or may not happen, Where's the underlying support? And if you are going to get involved and invest in cannabis stocks, this is something fundamentally you need to understand. Does that mean there is no value there? Does that mean that these stocks are forever doomed to go lower? No. But it may take a while. We're going to be sorting through these stocks over the next two and a half to five to ten years. Two and a half to five to ten years. Not a couple weeks. And that's the kind of time frame you need to be accepting on when getting involved in these. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If you look at the potential upside on these stocks and you had to wait two and a half to five years, and your alternative is the S&P 500, which only receives about a six, six and a half percent annual return regularly, you're looking at maybe 15 to 30 percent return on the S&P 500 over a given period of time versus potentially up to a thousand percent, two thousand percent with some of these cannabis stocks. But what we're going to find is that there's going to be winners and losers. 
bigger stocks, smaller stocks. Those smaller stocks are going to be forced to cut costs, make profits, and they're going to start merging. So these smaller companies, although they may be packed with value, I can name a couple. Bang Chocolates, uh, excellent company. Vex Sciences down in Arizona, profitable, significantly undervalued. Because there isn't enough individuals coming in to support these stocks. But what will happen is the medium to bigger players, the ones that do get the name recognition, that do get a lot of followers, they'll start accumulating these smaller stocks. So even though you may be in a very tiny stock with a very low valuation, eventually it is going to get accumulated by a much bigger stock. Now you're in a much bigger spotlight. And when it comes to these kinds of investments, I think that's really something that you need to acknowledge is this is sort of the landscape that we're dealing with. Then, if the federal government were to finally do something, which they're pretty much at completely out of step with constituencies, then these companies could potentially uplist to NASDAQ. And then the hedge funds can show up the retirement funds, the retirees, the big players. Robinhood, you'd be able to trade cannabis stocks on Robinhood. But as for right now, this process where we're looking at these valuations, valuations that are effectively nonsensical, you need to be able to look at this as a long-term play notwithstanding any kind of news release. If we were to get a catalyst news event, I can just see the individuals who've been on the sidelines and the clickbaiters, basically, finally showing up. Oh, yeah, cannabis stocks going through the moon, going to the moon, going to the moon. I guarantee these stocks will fall right back down. So if you rushed in, if there was a catalyst and you did rush in, you need to be understanding of where you are at this point. These stocks will go back down if we do get a catalyst. I have said this repeatedly. It is not an event. It is a process. This process of investing in cannabis stocks will take quarters, quarters, years, years. The eventuality is that you're going to outpace by a significant margin, the broader market. But it's going to take time. Take a look at what the United States is doing. They're going from pure prohibition to 38 states now have some form of legalization of cannabis. Europe is now getting ready to flip cannabis adult legal. Germany, a couple other countries, Israel, South America are all flipping adult use cannabis legalization or medical. Given that, think about the huge opportunity that it is there with all of these stocks. We're going from zero to a hundred. Right now, we're probably at like 10 or 15. There's a lot to go. But it's going to take time. And if you look at these stocks and these companies that are just at EBIT to profitability, starting to print net earnings profitability, and yet their valuations don't make sense, that's an opportunity for someone who's savvy. But it's going to take time. The catalysts, the news events that we may be getting here in the next couple weeks, next couple months, no, I don't have any new information. But those potential catalyst events will bring in a lot of new eyeballs. 
the broader stock market and looking at it right now, selling off again today. Those individuals are going to be desperate to get back any of those losses that they've just taken since January 1st. And all of a sudden, if there's an opportunity for individuals to jump into something else that's moving higher, we're going to get a lot of eyeballs. Those individuals are probably going to get burnt. Those of you who are involved in this, I've said this before, my game plan, when those eyeballs show up, I'm getting out. And then I'm waiting for the next bottoming to happen because it's not an event. It's a process getting involved in cannabis stocks. I've learned this after the, I don't know how many times these stocks have shot up. I've looked at them said, nah, it's too hot. Got out, markets moved back down. Okay, I'll buy that again because that's, now that's too low. We continue to do that. And when these stocks do shoot up again, I'm cleaning out. And then I'm waiting and I'll get back in when the prices are 25% what they were at those peaks. Thank you very much to all those individuals on Robinhood. If you approach cannabis investing, investing in cannabis stocks, and you look at it and said, listen, this isn't going to be magical. There's a process. There needs to be federal legalization. There needs to be big companies uplisting to NASDAQ. Those bigger companies need to acquire the smaller companies to get into states that they're not in already. What I've been looking for are those smaller companies that I know are going to get acquired by the major players because they're going to be doing that at premium. And as we've been dipping down here in the lows, I've been picking up a few more shares because the re valuations are just ridiculous on cannabis stocks right now. But my game plan is exactly that. Any catalysts we get, any moves higher, I'm cleaning out because it's not an event, it's a process. But this process will pay out orders of magnitude higher in returns versus the broader stock market. If you took that approach, that understanding, you look at today's uh, prices and sit there and say, this is an opportunity. And eventually these things may pop and I'm gonna make some money. But you need to understand that even if we get cannabis federal legalization, that's still not the magic bullet we're looking for. These smaller companies will get acquired. It's the only way they're going to survive. But they're going to get acquired at premium by the bigger players who are already profitable and have valuations that are just unbelievable. Those bigger players will uplist to NASDAQ and get all the attention. The hedge funds, the retirement funds, coming in and supporting those stocks. Right now, I've got about 105 stocks on my website. Pure play cannabis. Hands touching the product. My expectations is two and a half years from now, 50% of them are accumulating at a premium. If you understand that process, you'll understand how to invest in cannabis stocks.